Hey guys, this is lesson 7.3. I'm going to be talking to you about the derivatives of log and ln in this video because we're on like the second section of unit 7 of special derivatives. And so um, I think I'm going to be talking to you about logarithmic derivatives in this video. Okay, so let's get started with ln x first. We need to figure out the derivative, but I have no idea what the derivative of ln x is. Uh, so let's write this equation again. So example number one, equation is y equals ln x. We're going to write it again in a different form. So maybe eventually I'll get to a form that I know how to take the derivative of. Because right now, I don't know. So let's rewrite it in terms of log. Because log I'm more familiar with than ln. It's log with the base of e and an x beside it. Ln is specifically this log with a base of e. So if you had like a different base, like log 5x, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't be ln x anymore. It would be just log 5x. Okay, so ln is only the log with an e in the base. So I'm, I'm raring to go. I'm like ready to take the derivative. I can do y prime right now except I don't know how to take the derivative of log. So now I'm going to try and change it to another form that I'm more familiar with. And that would be I can convert it from logarithmic form to exponential. So e, the base, to the power of the answer is equal to that function right beside the log. I haven't taken the derivative yet. I've just been changing it from form to form. And so now it's an exponential form, but I do know how to take the derivative of an exponential. It was in my last two videos, 7.1 and 7.2. We took exponential derivatives. Okay, so I'm going to start taking the derivative now. It is going to be a little bit ugly though because, I mean, before when y was by itself, we would just write y prime. But notice, y is not by itself anymore. So how can I write y prime? Instead, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just write it like this. I'm going to take the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to x. So now I've got to write it like this, which is a different notation. I'm also going to take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x. Don't be fooled, like you've actually done this kind of thing before. So when you had something simple like f at x equals to 5x, you always just had written f prime, right? And that equals to 5 when you take the derivative. But instead of writing this step, you could have written it as, I'm going to take the derivative of f at x with respect to x, and I'm also going to take the derivative of the other side as well, because whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other, right? And so these guys are the same. You know that the derivative of 5x is just going to be 5, and the derivative of f prime, sorry, f at x is just f prime. Again, this is a different notation. It's the exact same thing. The only reason that we had to do it this way is because this y was stuck to something. Okay, so let's carry on. We'll just do the derivative of the left-hand side. The derivative of e to the power of y, we know from our last video that e to the power of a function, when I take the derivative, is just the same thing. But if the exponent is some sort of a function, then we'll also have to take the derivative of that function. Okay, let's do the right-hand side. Derivative of x, simple, it's just one. Remember our purpose, like what was the point of doing all of this? We had wanted to do at the very top the derivative of y, which is ln x. So the derivative of y, the derivative of ln x, is 1 over e to the power of y. Okay, so I brought the e over to the other side and it became part of a division, a denominator. The problem I have with this is you're not allowed to have y's on both sides of the equation. I mean, you should have like the y on the left hand side and everything on the right hand side should be an x, right? Because it's like a regular function, right? So what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of you. Let's delete you. And I'm going to use my green to show you. Well, we already know what e to the power of y is. It's just x. So how about we just 
write that x in the denominator. And there we go, we're done. Y prime is equal to 1 over x. What we just found is if we have ln x, the derivative is going to be 1 over x. So that's our general rule for ln x and its derivative. Let's move on to logs. Okay, example number two. This is not ln because we have a base of 5. Okay, so let's start working with it. I don't know what the derivative of log is, and so I can't jump right into y prime. So what I might want to do is put it into exponential form first, because again, I'm more familiar with exponents. y to the power of the answer, sorry, 5 to the power of the answer, which is y, is equal to x. So I've written it from the logarithmic form to the exponential form. Now I want to take the derivative. And again, I can't really just write y prime because y isn't really by itself. So I'm going to write it in this notation instead. 5 to the power of y, derivative, with respect to x. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side, taking the derivative of the right-hand side. Okay, so the derivative of 5 to the power of y that one was a little bit different because we had um, an actual number for the base. It wasn't e. And so if you go back to our previous video, 7.2 was where I actually talked to you about any number to the power of something and its derivative, so any base. And if you recall, what's going to happen is you're going to get the same thing multiplied by 1 over, sorry, not 1 over, I'm getting them mixed up. Multiplied by ln of the base. Multiplied by if the exponent, which is your y, is a function, you also have to take the derivative of that function, just like a chain rule. Okay, and then the derivative of x is just 1. So I'm going to move everything except for y prime to the other side, and it's going to become a division. 5 to the power of y times ln 5. And again, I don't want any y's on the right-hand side, just x's. So I'm going to replace that 5 to the power of y with an x instead. Now, you can write it this way, or you can write it as 1 over x times 1 over ln 5. Up to you, whichever one you want, because generally the rule is, if I have my original log with any base, then that means that the derivative is going to be 1 over x times 1 over ln of whatever your, whoop, I tried to put a 5, 1 over ln of whatever your base is. Okay, so this is our second derivative function that we talked about in this video. So I just did log, I also did ln. All right, let's try some examples. Holy cow. Example number three, what the heck is that? Y cubed, like we never dealt with a Y cubed before. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different ways. I'm gonna show you the way that I've been doing so far in this video, and then I'm gonna show you my personal way, which I like so much better. Okay, so let's do, since y is pretty much by itself already, we could technically do what we've been doing, which is let's take the derivative. So the derivative of your left side with respect to x is the derivative of your right side with respect to x. So I had to do it this way because y is almost alone, but it's stuck to something. Okay, and so I can't just write y prime. All right. So taking the derivative of y cubed is using the power rule 3y squared times, and I really don't know what y actually is, and so it could be like an entire function. So let's do a chain rule with the derivative of y as well. Equals 2, and then the right-hand side is pretty standard. 8x is the derivative of 4x squared. Okay, so y prime is equal to 8x over 3y squared. Now here's the problem. What is y squared? I don't know. 
because that's not what your original function was. Right? I can manipulate the original function. I can always take the original function and try to get a y squared by maybe multiplying or doing a power of a power. So if I do 2 over 3 and I know that these guys are going to multiply, those 3's will disappear and I will get my y squared. But whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other. Okay, so y squared is actually equal to 4x squared over 2 over, sorry, to the power of 2 over 3. So I'm going to write that right over here, 2 over 3. And now you have everything in x's. Okay, so that's the final answer. I really don't like doing it that way. To be honest, I mean, like, personally, I don't do it that way. I'll show you. I'll show you what I do. So this was the original question, right? So the problem was the three in the first place. I don't want this, which means why don't you just work with it a little bit first? Take the cubed root, but remember to do it on both sides. Now you get y by itself, so it's easy to do y prime. And you know that this is 4x squared to the 1 third. This is just a chain rule, right? y prime is 1 third. Right, bringing this down, multiplying, keeping, whoa, too fast, too excited. <laughs> hey, listen to me. Oh, uh, y prime. Okay, one third, try again. This is what happens when you rush. Okay, and then subtract one from there, so negative two over three times the derivative of the inside because we're doing chain rule. All right, so that's the derivative, and now cleaning up that negative exponent, you have 1 over 3. This entire thing is going to go into the denominator. 4x squared, 2 over 3. And then that 8x, since it's a multiply and that doesn't have a negative exponent, it'll be on the top. And there you go, and take a look, guys. It's like the exact same thing. <laughs> Right. You choose. I mean, like, you guys have been through so many years of algebra already. Being in grade 12, like, what are you, 18, 17? Right? That is, like, a lot of years of doing algebra. And over the years, you've got so many tools that you've been taught. And these aren't, like, one-time tools. These are, like, multi-tools. Okay? It's things that you can learn and use in every scenario. So use them if you want to. They make sense. They don't just work in one scenario. So for instance, like this next question, I can take the derivative right away and I can definitely go, okay, I'm going to take the derivative of 8y over something like this, which is what we've been doing the entire video. Okay, but instead, I think I want to show you another tool that you've done before, something that might look a little bit familiar. I'm not going to take the derivative yet. Okay. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and work with it a little bit before I actually take the derivative. I'm going to ln both sides. In advanced functions, you guys learn how to log both sides because ultimately you want that y to come down because being stuck as an exponent is like really annoying. Okay, so I haven't done the derivative yet. I'm just working with it because I kind of want y alone. All right, so y is isolated. Now I can take the derivative, and it's just a quotient rule. So y prime equals 2. Derivative of the top, which we just learned is 1 over x, right? The derivative of ln x is 1 over x times, don't touch the bottom, minus, so I'm just, I'm focusing on just the quotient rule right now. Derivative of the bottom, and since the bottom is like a number, there's no variables, you're going to get a zero. Multiplied by the top, okay, all over the bottom squared. Now, zero times ln x is going to disappear. And I think I'm going to write this all in a line, 1 over x times ln 8, 
And you know how like it's divided by line 8 squared? Well, I'm going to just flip it right away. So why don't we put that as multiply 1 over ln 8 squared. So you have a ln 8 at the top and a ln 8 at the bottom. Well, actually, you have two ln 8s at the bottom. So there should still be like 1 there now, which is 1 over x times 1 over ln 8. And that's it. We're done. If you had decided to take the derivative at the beginning and just start with the purple instead of doing the blue first, you would get the exact same answer. In fact, I, I want to show you that. Here's the last example. And on the right hand side, you have, well, the cheat sheet. <laughs> OK, so all of the original functions um, and then all of the derivatives. OK, so example number five, I've showed both ways. And I'm just going to go over it really quickly. So recall that the derivative of log, I'm going to write this down again, y equals log a to the x is 1 over x times 1 over ln a. Okay, so that was the rule, remember? All right, so let's see if it actually followed that. Taking the derivative right away, because y looks like it's isolated on the left-hand side, you have 1 over the function. Okay, so this guy is the function, and so 1 over the function is seen right here times 1 over ln of the base, and so that's your base. And since you don't see your base, you guys know now, it's a 10. So 1 over ln 10. Okay, so where is that middle part coming from? If this ends up to be some sort of a function, you also have to multiply f prime. Okay, so taking your f, which is all of that quadratic, not quadratic, sorry, quartic, and taking the derivative, you're going to now come up with this. So that is your f prime. And I cleaned it up a little bit. This guy should be in the numerator. Both of these are in the denominator. And so you get the final answer of the purple. Underneath, I've done it a different way. And so you'll see that you get the same answer because what if instead of doing the derivative right away, I wanted to work with it and put it into exponential form? Let's get rid of all of this first. You know this is base 10. So 10 to the power of y is going to equal to all of this. And that's what I have right here. OK, so I'm going to move down. And you guys can see all of the cheat sheet in all of its glory. OK, so I'm going to lawn both sides, just like I did in example number four. I did that so I could pull the y down out of the exponent. And now I can divide both sides by ln 10. So dividing this side by ln 10, that gets rid of these two. And I have y by itself, and it's all in blue still because this is still the original function. So the ln 10 in the denominator, I separated right here. And then I also have the numerator, all this guy, is right here. So I just separated them both. Now I'm going to treat them as a, I always get confused between power rule and product rule. The product rule, because this product, they're both multiplying each other. And so let's just call, I don't know, we'll call this u and we'll call this v. Product rule is derivative of one of them, doesn't matter which one. So it looks like I did the derivative of v, so v prime times the other one without touching it. And usually it would have a plus taking the derivative of u prime, sorry, derivative of u, which is u prime, and multiplying v. So the reason why you don't see it is because if you take a look at u, u is just a constant. It's just a number. So when we do this, we're actually going to get 0, which will get rid of all that anyway. So there's really no point in writing all of this. And that's basically what's left over. I'm going to scroll up again. See? Same answer. Right? OK, so that's it for this video. This video is on the derivatives of ln and log. And so we're going to get into some more special derivatives in the next video. See you later.